Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us on this afternoon, this warm, sunny Hawaii afternoon. And um, thank you. I really appreciate spending your time to review our Condo Insider, our weekly show. So with me today, we're going to talk about pipe replacements. Um, we're going to do this in two segments. And with me today, I have the very famous Sagewater team, two of the, um, the main people on the team. Um, we have Jennifer Barra. And we have Miguel Rentas. So I'm going to turn it over to them. They came into the Hawaii marketplace like 15, around 15 years ago. So why don't you guys introduce yourselves and tell us how you came into the marketplace? So I'll get started. Um, so just a two minute bite about Sage Water. Um, Sage Water actually started back east on the mainland in 1989 and um, we were one of the first companies to start doing pipe replacement occupied pipe replacement where owners and tenants could stay in their properties while we were doing work and um, so we kind of created this niche for ourselves and um, and as far as coming to Hawaii, I will let Miguel get into that because he was actually here. Um, I was hired just a few years ago. So he was, him and Joe Brawley came over and took our first job here. Thank you, Jen. Um, yes, yeah, so my name is Miguel Rentis. I'm Vice President of Operations here in Hawaii. Um, we arrived on island in, in 2009. Um, we actually were intrigued because at the time there was a um, there was a, a, a lawsuit going on for bad plumbing in the Hokua, uh, four years old. Um, they were having millions of dollars worth of leaks and everything. Um, the case went out. We caught wind of it on the internet by John Griffith. John Griffith is one of our vice presidents um, for sales and marketing and, and business development. Um, he caught wind of it said, look, there's a possibility for us to go out to Hawaii and do a project in 2009. Um, we should put some numbers together and send them our proposal. And we sent our proposal out. Um, they, uh, the story I was told um, from the building manager, uh, Dwayne Clemine, was that they looked at it, laughed, said there's no way that this company can do this job for this amount of money. Um, and basically threw it away. Uh, and then, Dwayne being how Dwayne is, Dwayne uh, took it out of the trash, said he's got a fiduciary duty to present it to the board. Um, the board looked at it and said, look, we can't not talk to these guys. we got to give them an opportunity. So um, John Griffith and, and Joe Brawley flew out uh, for their annual meeting um, and spoke in front of uh, most of the homeowners at the time and explained what we do and why our pricing is the way that it is. It was um, very, very competitive for us. Um, I'm not going to talk about numbers, but um, we were a lot lower than what the local competition was at the time. So they were skeptical because we're a mainland company and we had never done any work here. So they were like, look, there's a lot of obstacles. Are you sure you're going to be able to complete what you say and, and, and do what you're saying you're going to be able to do? And we said, absolutely. As a matter of fact, um, give us one floor as a pilot program. Um, gives us an opportunity to come out and and so that way we can actually see it as well um, and prove to you that we can do it. And we came out and we did one floor. Um, took us probably about, I would say the average time uh, when we did the pilot program was about almost seven days a unit. And then um, we got done with it, the board walked it. And then we actually told them, hey, look, after actually doing this one floor, um, we're going to lower our price even more because we realized it's not even as difficult as we thought it was. And they were like, you're kidding me. Are you serious? And we said, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, and they were like, okay. And then we went into contract negotiations. And then we started the project in July. I, I got in in July. We started the project in August of 2009. And we finished six and a half months later. And by the time we got done with the contract negotiations and we started the first unit, the average time went from seven days per unit to three and a half days per unit. Total completion, wow. nobody had to move out. We cut uh, anywhere from 40 to 50 holes um, throughout the unit to put all the plumbing in. 
and um, and we never left. Um, they asked me if I wanted to stay. Um, Joe was volunteering to fly back and forth, and I said, absolutely, I'll stay. I'll, I'll, I'll run the division here, not a problem. And I got promoted from uh, senior project manager to division manager. And then uh, that was in 2009, and we've been, we've been running ever since. Um, did our first DWV job out here in 2012 with uh, 1350 Alamoana, which just so happens to be Dwayne's brother's building, Ron Fumine. Um, and that was 353 units, um, all DWV, seven layers of drywall. Um, 8% of the units, uh, the kitchens had to be torn out and put back together and everything. And uh, we finished that job in just uh, just over 14 months. And we've been doing them steady ever since. Um, and just just loving it, loving it here. I got lucky. Uh, I can't complain, you know, which is funny because even when I do complain, everyone's like, you're in Hawaii, give me a break. Yeah. <laughs> what are you complaining about? I was like, well, all I have is T-shirts in my closet. I don't have any coats anymore. So I'm originally from New York. So it's it's new for me to to not have to worry about pulling out the winter clothes and putting away the summer clothes to make room in the closet. So it's it's pretty awesome. It's it's, it's a great community. Um, we've done to date, Jennifer, correct me if I'm wrong, a little over 35 buildings since we opened up our office in 2009. Um, full buildings. I think total jobs. Because sometimes we do smaller repairs or staff work. Um, we're in the mid forties. Yeah, so um, it's definitely unique working and living here in Hawaii. Um, it's it's surprising how much work there is. Um, the the lifestyle of all the people, and and it's it's also a little frustrating waking up in the morning driving into work and you're seeing all these people at the beach all the time. You're like, what am I doing wrong? Why, why can't I be that guy out on the beach right now, you know? And like you said earlier, you know, you smell all the barbecues and everything. You're like, oh, I am starving. <laughs> I, I just want some food. And, and, and the food here is awesome. You know, it's it, uh, I, the best fish I've ever had in the world I've, I've had here. Um, I love sushi. I love all the all the different cultures here and it's um and it's 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 a really great place to work um we started out in 2009 with only um three local employees at the time uh, everyone else moved here um for the length of the job and now we're 100 percent local um with 90 94 employees wow um, so we actually um we've actually grown quite a lot um, some of our guys have been with us since the beginning, since 2009, um, and never left. Our master plumber, uh, Ralph Nishimura, he's 82 years old, won't retire. We tried, he just won't. He's uh, He just keeps on kicking. Um, comes in every day, goes to every one of our jobs. It's, it's funny, we're doing a job out in, um, in Punalu'u right now, and Ralph went out there, he was like, this building looks familiar to me. And I'm like, why, Ralph? He was like, I'm just, I know why. I did the original plumbing in this building 50 years ago. And I was like, wow. So, you know, he brings a lot of experience and a lot to the table. Uh, Giovanni Camuso, our RME for general construction side, because we are a GC. Um, he's been he's been living on island since he was, I think he moved here when he was 19. And um, so he's been here over, over 40 years, over 50 years, been a GC for over 30 years here on the island. Um, and they they just helped us grow and and we we're, we're we're a household name now, which is um a lot a lot of it goes to like Jen said, you know, Joe Brawley helped us uh, open up this office here, and and we just kind of took it and ran, and here we are. Um, Do you find any differences between the the buildings here and the buildings that you've done on the mainland? It's as a, far as like the guts and stuff. It's a huge difference. It's funny. Um, so I, I traveled. I traveled with this company. So we're a nationwide company, um, and most of our crews travel a lot. Um, we don't do that here anymore. Over here, everyone's local. But I, I've noticed that the culture here, the people, they seem to they they seem to be okay waiting an extra day sometimes. <laughs> Um, except for the snowbirds that come here because it's their third home. They're the ones that are a little bit more antsy and they're like, Hey, you know, I need to get it done yesterday and, and so on and so forth. But, uh, the buildings overall, they, they there's a lot of concrete. Uh, I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's just, um, 
it's crazy how much stuff people don't realize is behind the walls. And, and that's one of the things that I've noticed here, especially they maximize the living space by cramming everything behind the wall in such a small cavity, which then entails us tearing up more than we need to um, just to get to the, to the plumbing and to actually replace the plumbing. So, um, and, and it's weird also, cause I never experienced it anywhere else, but you know, there's a thing called VOG here, which I, I didn't even know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember it was it was uh, right around September, October. They were telling me Kona wins and it's the VOG. And I'm like, no, it's my allergies, but I don't know what. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 totally different. Um, the buildings on uh, that we do, do on the mainland, they um, they're a, a little bit more tougher to do because the clientele is hurry up and get it done. Whereas here. The people will actually work with you a little bit. They 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 seem a little bit more laid back. I mean, it's the island life, so they they they're okay with the understanding, and and it's 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 amazing the obstacles that we have here. Um, one of the biggest ones is you know I, I can't just if if we run out of something I can't just run to the store and go get it. You got to wait for the shipping container to bring it into you, um, which which takes for a lot of organization. It takes for a lot of lead time, and and logistically it, it's it's tough. Um, to do the work out here, but you know, after after twelve years, we've uh, we've adapted, overcame, and, and we've got storage sites, and we, we've learned how to uh, adapt and, and get it done. And so it's been it's been great, um, and and we're just looking to keep on going until they tell us to go home. <laughs> well, I'm sure you guys will be busy for a while since we have so many buildings that were built, you know, in the late '60s, '70s, especially that are like hitting that time period of pipe replacements. Plus to the um, the taller ones that have to do the fire sprinklers and things of that nature. Um, and speaking of that, so if the building's going through pipe replacement and they're opting to do sprinklers, are you guys doing those kind of things, working together with the sprinkler installation people? Or so we're actually licensed to do the sprinkler. So e even a, a sprinkler contractor would still have a need of a plumbing license, mm -hmm. um, to do the plumbing, right? So it's just pipe. Pipe is pipe. Um, so we're actually involved in a lot of that. Um, we haven't done one yet. We've done a couple of repairs here and there, but we haven't done a building yet. But we are um, looking at branching out and giving these buildings that are doing their DWV uh, the potential and opportunity to do their sprinkler at the same time. It's just, it's a little difficult because they're two different systems all together and they don't necessarily run concurrently with each other. Um, but we are looking at, um, expanding and and giving that um a, a good good try and, and getting it done with with some of these buildings um but but back to what you were saying about the buildings being old it's it's actually it's perpetual right so even the buildings that were built in the 80s and 90s are now starting to have problems so we're starting to work on those buildings right because plumbing is is like what people fail to realize is plumbing is a maintenance thing it's just like a vehicle um your vehicle's got all these cables and lines and everything uh, it's got to get replaced. It's got to get repaired. You got to maintain it. And if you don't, it starts to fail. So the buildings that were built in the 80s and 90s are now starting to have problems as well. And then it's just a matter of time before the buildings that were built in the 2000s are going to have to get done. And then the 2010s, et cetera, et cetera. So we're not going anywhere for a long, long time. <laughs> <laughs> so when you replace the pipes, because I'm assuming that most of them that you're replacing are built with galvanized, right? So you're replacing them with copper? So it's it's actually um it's actually cast iron. Uh, what we've noticed the majority of the buildings here were built with cast iron on the waist side, and then they had galvanized pipes on the vent sides. So and it's really hard in a high rise building to put anything other than cast iron back because of the noise. Um, and so that's the biggest thing that people don't seem to understand. They're like, well, go back with PVC. Well, if you live on a top floor, that's great. But if you live on the bottom floor, you're hearing everything. It's like Niagara Falls. Um, you hear it, and there's no, there's no amount of insulation that's going to protect you from that. And then the other obstacles is in a high-rise building, uh, and if you do install PVC or ABS, you, you got to install these special fire collars, right? Because there is no fire rating for PVC. So there's a lot more added work and labor to making sure that that piece of plastic you just put in the building doesn't become a wick and then end up just transferring a fire between all the floors. Right. So, you know, there's there's your pros and cons on it. So what we've actually done a lot is um, 
talk buildings is going with what's called a hybrid system. Whereas as long as it's not a plenum, meaning that it's uh, a big shaft area, that it's basically a big void in the, in the, in the building where the plumbing is, as long as it's not that kind of a situation, you can do a hybrid system where you put PVC on the vent side and then cast iron on the waste side. Um, and what you do, there is some cost savings there. Um, and then you get the benefit of the, the noise cancellation that the cast iron gives you with the longevity on the vent side, because people forget that the vent side of the pipe is crucial to let that cast iron breathe, right? So when I say drain waste and vent, just to educate a little bit more, sorry, I'm going on, but uh, so you got your waste pipe that takes all the, all the stuff out of the building. Then there's a vent pipe that's attached to it that allows it to breathe. So picture um, you're drinking a soda through a straw. You put your finger over the top of the straw. You pick up the, the straw and the soda's still inside of the straw. Well, then you lift your finger up and it just goes right down. Well, that's the way a plumbing system works. And the vent line actually helps that. So when you replace the waste side, it's almost necessary to replace the vent side at the same time. And we've noticed that it's better to you know use PVC in some of those cases if it's allowed. Oh, I see. And really, just to go back to when you were talking about copper, we do find a lot of copper on the supply side, um, copper and galvanized on the supply. So when we replace those, it's, it's really building choice. Copper is very expensive right now. A lot of uh, buildings have been going towards um, um, some of the newer PECs, which is hardened plastic that's uh, that can carry chlorinated water in it. Um, so they've been going more towards those systems for their, the supply side. Um, and then the cast iron is usually on the drain waste and vent that we were talking about. We also do some hydronic and the fire sprinkler has, has become something that uh, a lot of buildings are planning on doing in the next year or two. I see. Okay, so um, where, how would a building even start? And then with that, we're going to probably be close to end of time. So where would the starting point be? And then our next segment, we can get into the nitty gritty details. We do a lot of education here. And what I always offer to buildings is, um, and I, I've done this at Murma and a bunch of other venues around town, we do like an education, you know, how do you know it's time to repipe? What are the steps that you need to put in place to get to the place where a company like ours could bid for bid, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll actually walk a building through that. Um, I do a lot of education meetings for boards um, and sometimes for the larger buildings. Um, I actually have been doing education meetings for their staff. Um, so Basically, call our office, call me, we'll set something up for you and walk you through the process. And um, in our next get together on the next Condo Insider, we are going to go through an abbreviated education on um, when do you know it's time to repipe your building. Oh, yeah, because everybody's going to have to be amending their reserves um, because previous a lot of buildings didn't have pipe replacement. So that's why it came kind of crashing down on a lot of people. And um, honestly, the reserve companies haven't been putting traditionally any money in for pipe replacement. They might have plumbing on the reserve, yeah, yeah, but they yeah. haven't been putting away adequate money for a pipe replacement. And since by statute here in Hawaii, you only have 20 years to save that money. Um, we, we have a variety of ways that we can help a building ascertain, you know, even if it's, and I get calls from buildings that were built in the 80s and 90s all the time now. Um, we usually offer to do sampling for them so they can send out the samples to a metallurgist and then get a real tight beat on how soon they're going to need to do this so they can start saving funds for it. Cool. I'm looking forward to our next one. I'm really excited to it. Um, because this is something that, you know, like you said, a lot of education so that people are aware, um, especially since that we really didn't think anything about it. I mean, even my own house, it wasn't until we started replacing it. And then one actually made a puka in the galvanized and started yeah. misting out in between the walls, you know, and I'm like, oh my God. And yeah. then when you look inside the pipe, we're like, we're drinking water out of that. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of scary, especially if you saw what we saw. Ooh. <laughs> That's pretty intense. 
So, so you know, really just to, to elaborate a little bit more, one of the things that we do besides the plumbing, um, and, and like Jennifer was saying, our niche, is, we also do all the drywall. We also do all the painting. Um, and it's all in-house employees. They're, they're not subs. So when you, when you do call Sage Water and we come out and we give you a price to replace your plumbing, that price typically includes if there's any asbestos abatement that needs to be done, as well as any tile work, any carpentry, painting, framing, all of that is included in our price. So that way you don't have to worry about calling multiple vendors to come out and give you pricing and give you numbers. So that, that's why we were able to get as much work as we got here because we offer a service that not a lot of companies can provide. Kind of like a one-stop shop, which is cool. It then is. you don't have to wait to schedule in this guy, have him finish it. Then you got to come back. Exactly. You know? exactly. So when the homeowner's like, you know, hey, it's eight o'clock, where's the tile guy? Yeah. I'm downstairs finishing his coffee. He'll be up in a minute. He works for me. <laughs> um, it's not, you know, you don't have to worry about that. It's, and it's one of the things that has made it very beneficial for us because then on top of being able to run all of these trades in-house, we're also able to manage them and, and give you the quality that you deserve and, and make sure that you are getting the best bang for your buck. So that way, if you do have an issue, you just call one person up. It's not calling 15 different contractors and getting the runaround and saying, oh, well, I called John up, but he told me to call Paul and Paul's not answering. And so, you know, it's it's very unique for us, and it's what we do to help the community out as well. When so you hire it's, us, it's it's project management in itself. Exactly. Yeah, which and, is and we do have project managers. We, we didn't in the beginning. When we started out back in 1989, we didn't even know what a project manager was uh, on the job, what he was necessary for. And then we, we, we've grown and we've learned to the point where now all of our jobs have dedicated project managers, and they don't wear two belts. All they do is manage the guys and manage the expectations of the homeowners and make sure they're communicating with the homeowners. The plumbing and the, and the construction work, that's the easy part. The hardest part of our job has always been making sure that the properties are informed, making sure that they have a clear understanding and a realistic expectation of what's to come and how it's going to affect them on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, water shutdowns. What do you mean I can't use the toilet from eight to, from eight to five? Um, you know, stuff like that. Well, there's your project manager, and here we are. So, it's it's part of what we do, and and what makes us so good at our jobs, um, and is part of the services that we give to everyone in the community as well. Okay, cool. So I think we're out of time. So I'm looking forward to our next one, which will be in September 15th. Yes, um, we'll be part two, and I'm really looking forward to it. So Miguel and Jennifer, thank you so much for spending your afternoon with me and explaining to us what Sage Water does. It was a great story how you guys came in. I really love it. <laughs> I really do. Okay. Thank you. And we'll see you back in a couple of weeks. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.